Well, thanks very much. I want to first uh, commend the work of Senator Heller and his, uh, his staff and my staff as well. John Richter is here somewhere. I don't know where he is, but I, I want to commend John's good work and Jillian Mueller and our, on our staff and so many others who made this possible. I'll start with um, one of the words that Senator Heller used, the word promise. This, this work, the, the, the report, the working group report and the legislation that, that flows from it uh, is an attempt, and I think it will be a successful attempt, to begin, and this will take a while, but to begin to fulfill the promise that we make to our veterans. I've often said that uh, one of our obligations, those of us who happen to be elected officials, is to demonstrate whether or not we're worthy of the valor uh, of our troops and worthy of the valor uh, of our veterans. If we get this right, we will have uh, passed that test. This is a test for the Congress. It's also, of course, a test for this administration or any administration. We cannot say that, that uh, the federal government and those who enact policy in the federal government are worthy of the valor of our veterans unless we can say that uh, uh, these claims are processed more expeditiously and we substantially cut down on the, the number of days where claims are backlogged. I mean, can we, can we really be satisfied or find it acceptable or, or in any way tolerate what we see in many states right now? For example, in Pennsylvania, in the Philadelphia region, the southeastern corner of our state, 309 days uh, is the average uh, time period that uh, uh, vet, uh, claims are backlogged. In, in, in the, the region in Pittsburgh, the other corner of the state, southwestern Pennsylvania, 345 days. The idea that a veteran and their families have to wait more than a year to have their uh, benefits processed is uh, beyond an outrage. So w there's some of the numbers that we're dealing with, but of course uh, we have individual stories as well. I'll summarize one very briefly in a moment. I do want to say as well that um, uh, even as we're in need of this legislation that the VA has been working to bring down the numbers. And we appreciate that and we commend that. But uh, there's a long way to go before we can say the job is done. Part of the effort uh, that uh, we undertake is uh, substantially benefited by the renewed attention on veterans issues that uh, played out even in the last couple of days and weeks. Uh, Chairman Bernie Sanders, I want to commend him for his work and those on the committee some of whom are, are with us today, I want to commend the work that they're doing. We need to put uh, that legislation back on the floor and keep working to pass it, as we're also trying to pass uh, our legislation as well. Uh, Senator Heller uh, read the veterans uh, organizations that have not only supported this, they've informed us, and they, they are the reason that we have the body of work that's contained in the uh, working group report. We want to thank them for that work. And we also want to thank the families uh, that have brought this issue to our attention and given us the sense of urgency that we should, we should all share, especially those of us in Congress and those who are serving in the administration. Here's one example uh, from my home state of Pennsylvania. Uh, December the 14th of 2012, a 91-year-old widow of a U.S. Army veteran who has over $4,000 in monthly expenses to cover her assisted living needs, uh, was trying to get uh, help. So she submitted a claim. Uh, all the appropriate documentation was filed as requested by the VA. Unfortunately, a year later, the claim was still under review, and all of her resources uh, were depleting. In September of 2013, now you're into the ninth or the tenth month, a request for an expedited processing was filed, but as of January of 2014, this year, a claim remained, or her claim remained in the final stages of review. Uh, she, our office at the time submitted a congressional inquiry, and within a month the claim was approved, and uh, she finally was able to come to the end of the road. That should never, ever take that long, and it should not, in my judgment, uh, take the intervention of a congressional office to do that. But unfortunately, that's more and more the case. I'm told that of the uh, many thousands of active cases that our office has right now. 28 percent, 
28 percent of those cases uh, are veterans cases. So we have an obligation not just to enact the right policy and to be vigilant and determined to make sure that even after uh, this piece of legislation is signed into law that we work uh, to make sure that it's uh, implemented well and that we remain vigilant. Passing a law, implementing it well will not be the end of the story. We have a long way to go. Uh, but I believe that this bipartisan demonstration of support as well as, the, as well as the sense of urgency that veterans and their families have, uh, uh, have brought to us will help us uh, keep moving forward. And in the end, it's about that word that uh, uh, Dean Heller mentioned in, in his remarks and, and I mentioned at the beginning, that word promise. We have to keep this promise. Uh, I think enacting this legislation is a substantial step in furtherance of keeping that promise.